Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, let's wrap up giving our desk that designer look. Stay tuned. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. For those of you who have been watching the channel for a while but just haven't quite made that commitment to subscribe, please, I would love to have you join my channel. I'm sure that you'll find it very informative. We do some fantastic crafts and we have the best online family on YouTube, bar none. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you join us. So guys, I have brought in everything that we have made so far in our designer desktop series. And as you guys know, I'm making these for my two sisters who, because of the virus, are now working from home. And you know, working from home has its pluses and minuses. But one of the minuses, you lose that human interaction. You're at home all day, and yes, you might go into a meeting every now and then via Skype, Zoom, or whatever it is, but that's not the same. So, we need to surround ourselves with things that are just going to brighten our day. And I decided I would do this for my two sisters, just create a whole workscape for them so that when they are working, they at least have something pretty to look at. So, we have all of these wonderful goodies, and today we are going to add to that. So today we are going to make these two cuties. This one is a mini clipboard and it came about because I really didn't want to waste the scrap. And I decided that having a little palm clipboard is actually a pretty good idea if you don't want to whip out the big one. Just having this little palm one that you can just put a piece of paper on and write a quick note is a pretty fun idea and it's also very cute. And, and guys, if you're doing a craft fair, tinies like this look very cute on your craft table. And then I decided that I would make my last project for this series, the large notebook that anyone who works and has to take notes needs something to take notes in. And this notebook is five and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And it is a beaut. So this is what we're going to make today and you're going to see just how easy it is to make these. I will be using my cinch for this, but I will also talk about an alternative way that you can get the cinch look if you don't have the actual cinch machine itself. And here's what we're going to need for today's project. I have a piece of decorative paper that measures three and three quarters by four and three quarters. I have a piece that measures six by six. I have two pieces that measure eight by five. I have two pieces that measure 10 by six. And then I have my chipboard. I have a scrap piece of chipboard that measures four by five. I've got six on here, but it's actually four by five. And then I have two pieces of chipboard that measure eight and one quarter by five and one quarter. And I have already added my double stick tape to the back. And the ones that we're making today are to finish out this set. Unfortunately, I ran out of this gorgeous paper. So I decided I would go with a very pale pink just to tie into it and not lose any of that cuteness. So it will go with this set, but it's not going to be this pattern anymore. And the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and make the tiny um, clipboard. So I am taking my six by six piece and I have my four by five inch piece of chipboard and I'm just going to place this down and this is a great way to get rid of scraps. So now that I have my chipboard down on my paper, I am just going to go along the edges with my stylus here to just give a crease in my paper. And going along the edges of your chipboard really helps with minimizing that cracking. So I am going to take this, stand it up, fold it over on all four sides, 
then I'll use my scissors just to come in and miter cut my corners. So then I'll take my glue, place my glue on those edge pieces and get it stuck down. You can use double stick tape on this part. You can even get away with using your tape runner on this because you'll be covering a good portion of the edge of this with another piece of paper. Okay, so once we have it covered, it's going to look like this. Now I'm simply going to take my back piece and I am going to just use my glue. I'm not even going to put down any tape because this is a very small board. So I can use my glue to get this stuck down. And I'll use my little spatula here, spread that glue out. Then I'll use my paper towel to get everything nice and smooth. And you can see that we've got just a sweet little board. Now, what I'm going to do, because I want a more rounded look to these corners, is I'm simply going to take my board and just roll it around my desk on all four corners. And this will help you to get that rounded look instead of that square look. So if you really want a roundness and you don't want to bring out a corner rounder of any type, just roll that chipboard along your desk and it will just sort of round itself. And you can see how this is rounded and it looks pretty doggone good. So I am going to set this down. And so now I need to add one of my little clips and I am simply going to use my E6000 for this. And I am going to take a little bit of E6000, place it on the bulb of that and then I'll place just a little bit up like that. Once I get it down, I'm going to pick this up so that we can look at it for just a minute to make sure that it's nice and straight. And it is, so I'm going to set this off to the side and let it dry for just a moment. So before we move on to our next project, I'm going to deviate just a little bit from uh, crafting those notebooks and clipboards to talking about paper because I get a lot of questions about what paper do I use? Do I use DSP? Do I use just regular copier paper? Do I use heavyweight cardstock? Guys, the truth of it is, I use anything that I like. I really don't care what it is. If I see a paper that I like, I know that 90% of the time, I'm going to be using that paper along with chipboard. So even if it's the thinnest of paper, such as this, this is a very thin paper, the kind of paper that you would run through your printer if you were printing on plain white paper. This is very thin. This would not make a box on its own, but I know that I'll be using chipboard, therefore I can use this to make a box. So I don't get hung up too much on what type paper should I be using. I think before we really started using chipboard in our projects, the paper type really mattered. Because if you were going to make a box, you certainly couldn't make a box out of this, but you could make a box out of cardstock, or you could make a box out of a heavier weight cardstock, or you could make a box out of DSP. But now that we are using chipboard, that takes a lot of that away because when I'm crafting, I'm crafting my projects for longevity. If I wanted to make just a plain old paper bag that I was going to have as a one and done, I was going to drop, um, let's say, some candy in a bag and give it away, I could certainly make that out of this. But this truly would be a one and done because it's not strong enough to stand the test of time. But when I take this and I add chipboard to it, this becomes a bag that is reusable over and over and over. You guys have seen me using napkins in my crafting. You guys have seen me using greeting cards to make boxes. You guys have seen me using all types of different things because if it's paper, let's craft it. 
let's not focus too much on it's not a DSP so I can't use it yes you can just think about the purpose for which you want to use the paper are you making a box are you making a bag are you simply making a card if you're making a card you would just go with cardstock but then if you want to make a box that same cardstock can be taken and used to make a box if you want to make a box that is going to let's say be reused over and over and over and sit out as a piece of home decor and that same piece of cardstock once you've backed it with a piece of chipboard takes on a whole new life it is no longer just a box it is a fully functional reusable box so you know I get a lot of questions that say what type paper are you using you never tell us what type paper you're using and there's a reason for that because I don't focus on the paper type when I see a paper that I like I get it if I feel this paper and it's flimsy like this that's not a problem for me because I know that I can use it with chipboard or if I want to make envelopes or if I have a need to make something where I need to use a thinner paper that's what I'll do but don't shy away from buying the thinnest of papers like a paper napkin all the way up to your more thicker papers like a heavyweight cardstock or a DSP because all of it is useful in our crafting it just all depends on what you want your end result to be you know I can never tell you to leave the chipboard out of a project because that's completely up to you I can tell you that I believe in using chipboard as you guys know from watching my channel I believe in making my project something that is meant to last and something that has many many uses and can become a part of someone's home decor so for me paper type isn't that important but for you if paper weight and paper type really truly matters just make sure that when you're choosing papers the first thing that you need to do is choose something that you like then decide how can I use this will this work for my project do I need anything else to go with the paper but the bottom line is buy what you like don't get hung up on someone telling you it has to be this or that if you don't want to use chipboard don't use chipboard use a paper that works for you if you want to use chipboard know that everything I have here on my desk will accept chipboard I've got heavyweight cardstock I've got lightweight I have a napkin all of these will work with chipboard but at the end of the day it is completely up to you guys so that's my little chat about uh, paper selections and paper types to use hopefully that helps to clear up a little bit of the mystery of what type paper is she using guys I don't focus on it so let's get back to our craft so my clip is still drying but this is dry enough for me to start working with it and I really just want to keep it very simple I am not going to do a whole lot to this I just want to add a little bit of pretty um, to this and so I am going to just choose a little flower to put on here and even though it doesn't quite match I do like the look of these flowers so I am going to just put that right there in the corner use my big old spatula and make sure that that sticker sticks because sometimes when you buy these stickers from Tuesday morning they might be a little old and the stick might not be as strong but you can see that we now have this really cute palm clipboard it is a perfect little one to carry around in case you want to jot something down so I am going to set this to the side and we're going to make that notebook okay guys so to make our project we're going to need to take our eight and a quarter by five and a quarter inch chipboard and place it down on our eight by ten paper mine looks like it's placed down already why might you ask is it placed down already and we didn't see you do it well it's placed down already because I thought I was recording and I wasn't so I have placed my chipboard on my 8x10 paper I did go ahead and miter those edges so on this one I am going to go around all four edges of my board and this will help to reduce cracking so I'm using my um, stylus and going around on all four edges then 
I am going to stand it up, fold it over, and I will miter cut my corners. And I did that on the other one on all four sides. And now this one looks like this one, and we are rocking and rolling. So I am going to take my glue, place my glue on these edge pieces here, then I can fold them over, I'll get them stuck down, then I'm going to use my large spatula, you can use your bone folder, the edge of your bone folder, you can use a ruler, you can use anything you want to run along the edges to just kind of smooth everything out and get that nice professional crispness going. So again, I'll take my spatula and I'm just running it along the edge. And what that does is it squares everything off and it makes it look nice, neat, and professional, which is what we want. So I'll do this one completely with you guys and then I will do the other one off camera. So again, I'll go along that and let's do the last one. Okay, so we have these edges down. Now I'll bring this one in, do this one off camera, and then I'll be back. All right guys, so now I have my edges folded over on both pieces and I have laid down my tape. So now we are going to take our two pieces that measure eight by five and place those down as our inside liner pieces. So all I'm going to do is run some glue along the edge and we will get these stuck down. So I'm going to take this and just place it right there. Get that nice and stuck. And as you can see, I didn't quite get my miter all the way. That's going to be fine. Absolutely no problem. So I will set this one to the side and we'll do the same thing on this one. All right, so now we have our two boards, front and back, ready to put this cutie together. So what I have here for the inside, I have 50 sheets of paper and my paper is cut at eight by four and seven eighths. And it's very important that if you're using something like a cinch where you're going to have a wire on the end, that you cut your paper a little bit shorter than the width of the board. So my board is five and a quarter and I'm reducing this to four and seven eighths. And that's because when you put the wire in, it pretty much pushes everything out. So if you cut your paper to be the same size or just a tad smaller than the board, it might force it to extend over. So my recommendation is that you reduce your paper size by at least 3 eighths of an inch so that it is not going to extend beyond the edge when you have it like this. So, so here is my cinch coil and basically I am going to put 12 holes in this so that means that if you're using a cinch you want to count off 12 of these and the easiest way to do it is just to count from here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and then when you have your hand on number 12 just rotate it around and your finger is going to end up in this little well here. That's where you want to make your cut and you're going to need some wire nips to be able to do it. So I'll take my nips, place it inside, and then just nip off. And you can see that I have that edge there and that edge there. So now we can put this together and before we put it together, if you don't have a cinch, I will have a template on my website that will have 12 holes lined up. You take that template and place it down on whatever you want to punch a hole in 
it will give you even spacing. You can find these coils on Amazon, you can find them at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. So if you want to use this look but you don't have a cinch, you can still get the look. You'll just have to manually punch your own holes, but it's no big deal guys. I was doing it like that before the um, cinch ever came out. It takes a little more time, but it's not a huge deal. It can be done and your project can look just as um, professional as this one. So here is my cinch. She is old. Um, it's one of the original ones and I don't know how old it is, but it doesn't have all of the fancy things on the side and on the back that some of the newer ones have, but you know what? It gets the job done. So all I need to do is here are my pegs and if the pegs are pushed in that means that all of them are going to punch a hole and because I do want all 12 holes I've got all of my pegs pushed in I am going to take my board make sure I've got my words going in the right direction so I'm going to take my board face up on the first one I've got it in so that my center point is going to punch dead center on this board and I'll just pull down on my handle and now I have my holes in my board I will set this to the side I'm going to grab the back piece and again I want to make sure that my words are going in the right direction but when you do the back piece you need to make sure that instead of having the outside facing you you've got the inside liner facing up let's place it inside of the cinch or whatever you're using and I have my holes punched so now you can see that I have even hole placement and then I am going to take my papers and the cinch will go through a good number of papers at the same time and so now that I have my papers in I don't need to do any adjustments to the settings I am just going to start punching holes in my paper until I have all of them done and then we'll put this together. So once I have all the holes punched, I am going to take my wire and place it along this guide on the side of the cinch that's designed to hold your wire. So when you place it down, you just place it down just like that. And now we can take our book and put everything together. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to take my papers and put them down. Then I am going to take, oops, forgot a couple. Then I am going to take the front, which is this piece, and place it down then I'll take the back which will go down face up and place it down and now I can lift this up so then on the back side of your cinch you have this here that goes up and down using your handle and on the side sorry for all that noise and on the side you'll have these little measurements that will tell you if you're using this size coil this is where you should have your knob so I am going to take trying to do this so it'll stay in camera so I am simply going to take this just like this and I put it in the back and then I'm just going to start squeezing down and I like to take mine and just flip it over and go from side to side when I'm bringing it down And then when I have it close enough like this, I like to just come back and manually close it myself. You can keep pressing it, but it's just easier for me just to come back and do a manual close on this. So now when I open it, you can see that I have a beautiful book and in the back, that's where all of the mechanics of how I put this together is hidden. So I'm going to bring this back to the front and we now have a beautiful, beautiful second notebook to go with 
the first one that I made. So all I'm going to do at this point is I want to add this sweet little mint green pen. I am going to use one of my clips. I am not going to add any decorations to this book at all. And I am going to take my pen, clip it in just like that, move it around some so I can try to get straight. Sometimes my pins don't want to lay straight. And now we have a second notebook to go with the first notebook. And I am going to bring in my little clipboards and they are such many cuties. And these are just some of the things that we can do guys when we want to make a desk set or we want to make our own notebooks or we want to make notebooks of any type to sell at a craft fair. We can take advantage of some of the machines that are out there like the cinch or we can do them by hand. You don't always have to have a machine. I use my cinch because it's just that, a cinch to make these books. But if you don't have it, don't rush out and buy it. Just pull that template from my website. It's a free template. Just pull it from the website and then you can have a guide to where your holes need to be punched. Find yourself some coils and you too can make these books in a cinch without a cinch. So guys, I hope that you have liked these projects and as a reminder, great way to use up those scraps. And if you have liked this project, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys, have a great day. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.